Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. We say shalom, 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 uh, peace and blessings, uh, shalom and barak to the whole house, the whole by eat of Yasha all, all 12 tribes worldwide, wherever your feet are touching the soil on this evening, on this Layila, to the elder brother Yahuda, to the younger brother Afraim, to the former stranger, the former foreigner who was formerly estranged from the everlasting covenant, but having now received the Ruach of adoption, the Ruach HaKadush, the Ruach of the Mashiach, and whereby now having been engrafted into the olive tree, who is Yahusha HaMashiach, who is Yashar'al, and now whereby having become a fellow citizen of Yashar'al, and now a fellow partaker of the same everlasting covenant and promise and inheritance that was given to Yasha all and to Yasha all alone. Shalom, peace and blessings. Shalom and barakou to you and your entire house, wherever your feet are touching the soil on this evening. Laila tu, good evening to both you and your entire house. Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. Once more, for those of you uh, who have joined Yahuwah's Remnant uh, via YouTube for our midweek gathering, we are grateful once again that the Master has sent you our way. We do not take this for granted. This is a large, a big, major undertaking that the Master has given us, and we are humbled. We are humbled to take part in his work, and so we do not take it for granted. Uh, that uh, you would join us whenever that hour may be later on this evening or tomorrow the next day we are humbled we are truly humbled that the master would send you our way again for those of you who will listen to this message later on via youtube if you would desire to join us live for either our midweek gatherings uh, which happen on the fourth day in which men typically call wednesday uh, or on the shabbat day then uh, you may contact us. There is, uh, you may find our contact information located within the channel description. Uh, in the channel description, you will find our email address, uh, and you may use that to email us and contact us if you would desire to join us live for either our fourth day gatherings or our Shabbat gatherings. Nevertheless, shalom, 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 peace and blessings, shalom and barakut to you and your entire house. On this evening, Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. Here we are, we are continuing this preparation journey uh, on our way to Mount Zion, uh, on our way there, and on our way there, uh, the Master is revealing things to us that he has not revealed to any other generation. He has not revealed this truth, these truths to any other generation, but he has chosen to reveal these truths and these secrets to us in this generation. Indeed, now that he has revealed this truth to us um, in the same manner, in the, in, at the same time that he is revealing these truths to us, he has now began to prepare us. Uh, he is preparing his sheep for his imminent return. He is preparing a select few. He is, re he is preparing a remnant within a remnant uh, to be gathered unto him unto Mount Zion. Indeed, this is a season of sealing. Hear him. This is a season of sealing. It is a season of separation. It is a season of preparation. And it is a season of sealing. Hear him. He operates in appointed times. Once this appointed time has passed, once this small window has closed. He will seal no other. He have a he has a specific number of people that he is going to seal, and after he has reached that number, and which the scriptures uh, declare is one hundred and forty four thousand, once he has reached this number, he will seal no more. Hear him, hear him, and so this is a very small window. This season is closing. The proverbial doors of this ark are almost shut. 
You must get on board of this ark and be sealed in while there is still a sealing going on. Indeed, there is a separation now going on right before our eyes as we are now in the wilderness of the nations. And here in the wilderness of the nations, he is separating the rebels from amongst us. Yes, he is. If you have eyes to see, he is now separating the rebels from amongst us and he is sealing his people here in the wilderness of the nations. He is wooing us to himself. He is bringing us to himself. He is dealing with us here in the wilderness of the nations. And there was a great separation going on between those who were his and between those who were not. And once that window has closed, once that specific number of people has been met in this Muadah, in this appointed time, which is 144,000, that window is going to close and the doors of that ark are going to shut and he will seal no more in this season. He will seal no more. These are not my words. They're his. They are his words. They are his words. Once he has sealed 144,000, he's not sealing anymore. 144,000 and those who are adjoined are attached to us. He will seal no more. He will seal no more. And so as we continue this journey, the master has now revealed to us that uh, this is a story that is being played out. It is a story of a man and his two wives. It is a love story, if you will. It is a romance story, if you will. A love story of a man correcting his two wayward wives, uh, the, the elder one and the younger one. And if you will, as he has shown us, the elder daughter is portrayed through La'a, who is the mother of Yahuda. The younger daughter is portrayed through Rakal, who is the younger daughter, who is the mother of Yahusuf, who is the father of Aphraim. And so we, we find here a love story being played out. But as the Torah has proclaimed in the 29th chapter of Genesis, we find there that the elder daughter is to be given in marriage first, followed by the younger daughter. The elder daughter being Judah, a Yahuda. Indeed, Yahuda goes first. Yahuda is the first to be given in marriage. It is Yahuda who will be brought to Mount Zion. Well, the younger daughter, Aphraim, will be left to deal with the fires of the great distress. The master has revealed to us that the elder daughter, indeed, are those who are sealed and those who are sealed with the name of the living Elohim upon their forehead, those who are sealed with the Ruach HaKadosh and who are indeed walking requisite of someone who is grown, someone who is fully grown, no longer walking according to the lust of the flesh, but walking according to Ruach, walking in Ruach and in truth. Whereas the younger daughter, the younger son, is still walking in folly, still walking according to the lust of the flesh, and because the younger daughter, the younger son is still acting as a child, then he must face a chastening rod. He, she must face, must be corrected with the chastening rod of the great distress in order to be prepared for marriage. In order to be prepared for marriage. So the elder daughter, the elder son, Yahuda, is to, in accordance with the Torah, as the master has revealed, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, the elder daughter is to be given in marriage first, followed by the younger daughter or the younger son, Aphraim, used interchangeably between daughter and son. Aphraim is to be given into marriage last after he has been corrected in the fires of the great tribulation. But the master has placed a great responsibility on the house of Yahuda. He has called us to walk requisite of our calling. He has, caused, he, he has called us to walk as grown-ups, 
to be lights to the nations, to be lights even to Aphraim, to be lights so that the full number of those of whom he has called and of those he, of whom he has chosen would attach themselves to the elder brother of whom the scepter will not pass, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. He has called us to be that light to the Gentiles, to the nations, so that they will understand that they must attach themselves to Yahuda, to the elder brother, to the elder daughter, if they desire to escape the hour of trial, which is soon to come upon this earth. And we must be that light. We must be that living Torah. We must be that Torah made flesh and walk in our callings, lest we hear the words, bind this wicked servant hand and foot, cast them into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so again, we, we, we find the story, a beautiful, a beautiful story being played out. Uh, and ultimately, uh, it is regarding uh, the restoration of all things. It is regarding the restoration of all mankind. Because if mankind would attach themselves to Yahusha, Hamashiach, whereby being engrafted in this season into the elder son, Yahuda, he, he and she would be saved from the hour of trial. But ultimately, if mankind would engraft themselves into Yahusha by receiving his Ruach and whereby being engrafted into Yasha'ah, mankind would be restored back to favor, restored back to covenant with the master, restored back to covenant with the master and would inherit life. The operative word here is inherit. The inheritance always goes to the firstborn son. The possessions of the father always goes to the firstborn son. He has but one son, that is Yahshua, who represents his firstborn son, Adam, which means mankind. So the deliverance of man must take place through the house of Yahshua. But as it plays out in this season, as it, uh, 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 as it applies to this season, those who attach themselves to Yahuda, to the elder bride, to the elder brother, Barak Yahuwah, if they attach themselves to the elder son, the elder daughter in truth, walking as Yahuda, walking in Ruah and in truth, walking as we walk, he has promised to save us from the hour of trial, which is soon to come upon this earth. But the master, the master wants his people to understand those who are grown, those who are full grown, no longer walking as children, that there is a far greater story being played out here right before our eyes. There is a far greater story that is being played out right before our eyes. In the story of these two wives, again, the elder daughter, she goes first. She, she goes to Mount Zion as to be joined in marriage with her husband first, and then she will be brought to the land. Afterwards, the younger daughter, after she has been brought through the fires of the great tribulation and the folly has been driven out of her and she has been corrected, then she will be uh, brought into marriage with her husband. And with her will come out every nation, tribe, and tongue. This is Ephraim in accordance with uh, Genesis, the 48th chapter, the 19th verse, that Ephraim, Aphraim, would become the completeness of the nations. Not that everyone in every nation is Aphraim, is Ephraim, but Ephraim is represented in every nation, tribe, and tongue. Ephraim is a coat of many colors now. He represents many colors, many nations, tribes, and tongues. He is the completeness of the nations. He represents Adam. He represents firstborn, as Aphraim is firstborn. He represents mankind. And when he comes out of the great distress, coming with him will come every nation, tribe, and tongue. At this juncture, 
Before we get to that juncture, there's something that you must understand. And this is that story that's being played out. This is that story that is being played out. In the Hebrew or the Arbery marriage process, it always begins with a purchase. It begins with a purchase. It begins with the man betrothing his wife and purchasing her and then owning her. Indeed, in this season, we understand that we have not been purchased with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious dumb, the precious blood of Yahusha HaMashiach. And by his blood and by his dumb, he has redeemed his bride. But this story begins in Egypt. <clears throat> many, many years ago, it begins in Egypt when uh, there was uh, something symbolic that took place. Uh, there was a lamb slaughtered there in the lamb of Egypt. Um, and blood was shed, which was symbolic of a purchase. Yes, it was. Uh, symbolic of the master purchasing his bride. He purchased his bride, 600,000 men on foot, plus not counting the women and the children and the strangers that would have joined to them. He purchased his bride in the land of Masraim, in the land of Egypt. There is nothing new under the sun, but this is the process. Follow him. Follow him. This is the process that must take place. It begins with a betrothal, with a purchase. And our ancestors there were purchased in the land of Masraim. After purchase, there then must be the exchanging of vows. After our ancestors left Egypt, they were brought to Mount Sinai, where there was an exchanging of vows. Otherwise called the ten dabarim or the ten words. There was an exchanging of vows that were given there. After the exchange of the vows in the Hebrew or the Abarit marriage process, there is a marriage feast. There is a marriage feast that occurs. And here we arrive at what the master wants to show us here this evening. When Ephraim, when Aphraim is, is finally joined, you see the two wives, those two women will then become one woman. They will become one woman. They will become Yasher all. They will become one woman joined to one man being joined to one man in a renewed marriage covenant. But the master wants to open up your understanding a little bit more. He wants to open up your understanding a little bit more this evening. You see that 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 process, this is this is a restoration process. What restoration process do you speak of? It is the restoration process of mankind. It is the restoration process of both Adam and Kua. Of Adam and Kua. You see, Yasha all is Kua. This is about the restoration of all mankind. Yasha all is Kua. And the second Adam, yes, he is her husband. He is her husband. He is the husband of Kua, of his bride. And so this is about the restoration now of all mankind in which the second Adam represents mankind. He does, and so does Yasha all. But Yasha all represents Kua. She is the woman. She is the woman who is going to enter into a marriage feast as one woman at the marriage supper of the Lamb and, uh, and who is going to enjoy a marriage feast for 1,000 years. For one thousand years but the master wants you to understand more he does not lo no longer wants you to be children he wants you to understand more he wants you to understand much more in the Torah it is written that a woman who is in her nidia who is in a period of separation must remain separated from her husband for seven days for seven days does this separation between us and Yahuwah in his true form. It must be completed. It must go through the completion of 7,000 years. When Yahusha comes to, uh, uh, to sit on the throne of Dawood and to join himself as the second Adam to his bride, Kua, uh, this, uh, this must take place, uh, uh, this must go on for a 1,000 years. Until the completion of 7,000 years so that this cycle, this cycle of restoration of mankind is completed. So that it is completed. After, after seven days on the eighth day, 
on the last great day, on the eighth day, a lamb is slaughtered for the woman and the Kahan pronounces her clean. Then her husband can go in to her. He can then go into her. After 7,000 years, on the eighth day, on the last great day, Yahushua, our lamb, slaughtered before the foundation of the earth, is going to present himself as that lamb for mankind, for Kua and Adam. And the woman is going to finally be pronounced clean. But here's something you need to understand. At the conclusion of 7,000 years, our husband, the second Adam, our husband, he's going to put off that flesh. He's going to put off that flesh, and so is Kua. Kua is going to put off that flesh, and then uh, we are, uh, 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 and whatever he looks like, we are going to look like. Because then, at that moment, on the last great day, as we move into eternity, then the husband can finally go in to his wife. And as he enters his wife fully and wholly, as he enters his wife fully and we become fully one with him and we become fully like him as it is written in 1 John uh, the third chapter. We do not yet know what we shall be, but when we see him, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. We shall be fully one with him and be like him. The master wants you to understand something. He wants you to understand something. Before anything was created, Yahuwah went to, to and fro in eternity all by himself, alone. He did created a bride for himself. He created a son. Before the foundation of the earth, he created a son for himself. This story then is being played out in Adam and Kua. As Adam was taken out of her husband, we are taken out of our husband. As her breath was given by her husband or given through Yahuwah, through her husband, our breath comes from our husband. We are taken out of him. We are taken out of him. But the master wants you to understand something else. As the master Yahuwah said, it is not good for man to be alone as he was alone. I shall make him a help me. I shall make him a counterpart. I shall make him a counterpart. When we are like him, when Kua is like him, when Adam puts off flesh and he takes on his true form, his wife is going to be like him, his help me, his counterpart. No longer be children, Naspaka. No longer be children. Wrap your minds around it. I know it's hard. You need to understand the love that the master has for us. What is man that he is mindful of us or the son of man that he should visit us? He has made us a little lower than Elohim. Yes, he has. And has crowned us with honor and esteem. And has placed everything underneath our feet. As the story plays out with Adam and Kua, when, when he said it's not good for man to be alone, Adam being made in the very image and esteem of Elohim, said it's not good for him to be alone. I shall make him a help me, a Nazar Nagab. I shall make him a counterpart. I shall make someone like him. I shall make him someone like him. Yes, we do not yet know what we shall be. But when we see him, we shall see him as he is because we shall be like him him his help me his counterpart this is the story that's being played out right before your eyes if you have eyes to see and this is a truth that has never been revealed to any other generation but this one this is what is at stake this is what is at stake in eternity but in the near term in the near term when we see these two wives this is this is what's ultimately being played out because these two wives are one day going to be one. Two sticks are going to become one. And Kua is going to be restored again. And joined to her husband, Adam. In the person of Yahushua HaMashiach. And for 1,000 years. And 1,000 years is a day. As Adam and Kua could not walk one day without committing crime. Adam and Kua are going to walk for 1,000 years without committing crime. Thus completing the cycle. Thus completing the cycle of, reconcil of reconciliation. And then Kua 
Mankind is going to be joined to her husband as his help me, as his counterpart, as his Azar, Nagab. And so now this story is being played out in Yahuda. It is being played out within Yahuda as we speak. It is being played out within the house of Yahuda. And if you are taking notes this night, the title of this teaching is Searching for the Ancient Path, Part 59. Walk as Yahudim. Walk as Yahudim. This story is now being played out in the house of Yahuda, searching for the ancient path, part 59. Walk as Yahudim. Walk as Yahudim. What the master wants you to understand this evening is that true Yahudim are not serene. True Yahudim are not serene. The master has said that not all who call themselves Yahudim are Yahudim. He wants you to understand that true Yahudim are not serene. True Yahudim are the bride that have what? That have been taken out of their husband. Yes, who have received his breath, who have received his roar, and who have been taken out of their husband. True Yahudim are not serene. The word Nasar in the Hebrew it means branch. As Yahusha is the branch. He is ha Natsa, which means the branch. He is the branch. And those who are married to him are branches, are not serene, or in other words, have been taken out of him. Kua. Have been taken out of their husband. True Yahudim are not serene, are branches, are branches. Line by line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. True not serene, true, true Yahudim are not serene, and they follow their husband in the way that a dutiful wife would submit herself and follow her husband, obeying every word that proceeds from his mouth. True Yahudim are not serene, having now become branches and having now become, having are being restored and taken out of the side of Adam, in this case the second Adam, and becoming his wife, and becoming his wife, and being connected to him as branches, as not serene. True Yahudim, true Yahudim are not serene. And if you are indeed a not serene, then you will reflect the behavior and the character of Ha Natsa. You will look just like him, you will walk just like him. You will walk just like a Yahudim. You will walk just like a Yahudim. So looking here now at an excerpt uh, from a 4th century church father uh, by the name of Epiphanes, I believe is his name, little one? Yes. Epiphanes. Uh, he is a 4th century church father. Uh, we're going to read an excerpt from him uh, in establishing the fact Line upon line, line by line, precept upon precept, that true Yahudim are not serene. True Yahudim are not serene. This is something that was written in the fourth century uh, by one of the Christian church fathers. He's not one of my fathers. My fathers are Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yahoku. But uh, for the purpose of this teaching, of this message, we're going to use this, uh, this brief excerpt, uh, which is truth from one of their church fathers. From one of the church fathers. So I'm going to have you read this little one. This excerpt from Epiphanes. Uh, who wrote this in the 4th century. When you're ready to read go ahead. I'm ready. We shall now especially consider heretics. Who call themselves not serene. Mm -hmm. They are mainly Yahudim. They are mainly what? Yahudim. They are mainly Yahudim. True Yahudim are not serene. Are branches of the branch. Ha not saw. Read. And nothing else. And nothing else. They make use of not only of the New Testament. They make use of not only the Berit Kadashah, read. But they also use in a way the Old Testament. They also use in a way the Tanakh, read. Of the Yahudim. Of the Yahudim. True Yahudim are not serene, read. For they do not forbid the books of the Torah. For they do not forbid the books of the Torah. The prophets. The prophets. And the writings. And the writings. So that they are approved by the Yahudim. So that they are approved by the Yahudim. From whom the Nazarene do not differ in from anything. From whom the Nazarene do not differ from in anything. Read. 
and they profess all the dogmas pertaining to the prescriptions of the Torah. They 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 confess all of the dogmas. You got to read that again, little one. <laughs> And they possess all the dogmas pertaining to the prescriptions of the Torah. Barak Yahuwah, good, keep reading. And to the customs of the Yahudim. Uh huh. Except they believe in Mashiach. Except they believe in Hamashiach. True Yahudim are not serene. There are many in this hour, in this season, who do not believe in the Hamashiach. And there are, there are many in this season, in this hour, who say that they believe in Hamashiach. And uh, that they believe uh, that he is Yahuwah, but 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 their character, but their fruit, uh, it, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't match what they say they believe. They don't walk as him. They ain't no different than Christians who say that they believe in him. They don't walk as him. If he indeed is your husband, we a woman is to follow her husband as her husband follows Hamashiach. She is to submit to him and obey him. And follow him. She is to be a reflection of him. If we are not a reflection of our husband. Following him. Wherever he leads us. In accordance with Revelation 14 verses 1 through 5. He's not our husband. We're not Nazarene. We don't have his nature and his character. To have his nature and his character is to walk as he walked. And that is to walk as a Yahudim. But indeed true Yahudim. Are not serene, being branches of our branch, being taken out of his side, receiving his breath, having relations with him, becoming one with him, being his wife. Come on, read. They preach that there is but one Elohim. Yes. And his son Yahusha. Yes. Mashiach. Mm -hmm. But they are very learned in the Hebrew language. Uh huh. For they, like the Yahudim, Read the whole Torah, mm -hmm. then the prophets. Mm -hmm. They differ from the Yahudim because they believe in Mashiach. Mm -hmm. And from the Christians in that they are to this day bound to the Yahudim rites. Mm -hmm. Such as circumcision, mm -hmm. the Shabbat, and other ceremonies. Mm -hmm. They have the good news according to Matthew in they, its entirety. They have the good news according to Matat Yahu Matthew in its entirety. Read. In Hebrew. In Hebrew, read. For it is clear that they still preserve this uh -huh. in the Hebrew alphabet. Yes. As it was originally written. As it was originally written. Matat Yahoo Matthew was originally written in the Hebrew, the Abarit tongue, and then translated into the Greek tongue. But it was originally written in the Hebrew or the Abarit tongue for Hebrews, for Nazarene, for Yahudim, for Yahudim. But again, indeed, true Yahudim are not serene, being taken out of the side of their husband. See the story that is being played out. Having been taken out of the side of their husband, Ephraim will have this distinction when they come out of the nations. Then they will be taken out of the side of their husband when uh, they have clean water sprinkled upon them, when they have the heart of stone uh, removed and, a heart and, and replaced with a heart of flesh, and then having his ruach placed in them and then cause them to obey his commandments. Then they will be taken out of his side as Ephraim then and Judah, Ephraim and Judah then become one woman, then become Kua. Then we will be, then we will celebrate a wedding feast. Then we will celebrate a wedding feast. But as it pertains to this season, Yahuda, you're not a Yahudim if you're not a Nazarene. You're not a Yahudim if you're not a Nazarene, and you're not a Nazarene unless you resemble and look like your husband, unless you resemble and look like Hanatsar, the branch. True Nazarene, true Yahudim are in fact, are indeed Nazarene, having been taken out of the side of their husband, having become branches of the branch. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little. Dare a little. Let the master establish this fact, little one. Give us another precept. Isaiah 11, 1. Isaiah 11, Yeshayahu 11, chapter, verse 1. Isaiah. Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. Yeshayahu, the 11th chapter, verse 1. Isaiah 11. Yeshayahu. 
chapter 11, verse 1, beginning at verse 1. Read, little one. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Ishai. Read. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Not sa. This word is not sa. The Hebrew not sa, which means branch. This is Yahusha, Hamashiach, who is the branch, who is ha, not sa. But there is a greater story here that is being played out. He is a stump. And why is he a stump? Because the original vine, which was planted as a choice vine, I began to do corruptly and began to bear putrid fruit. It began to bear rotten fruit. Thus, the original vine was uprooted and scattered to the four corners of the earth. If now that original vine desires to get back to the land, desires to get back to the father. They must now attach themselves to this stump, this root, which has now grown up into a vine. Yes, he has. He has grown into a vine. And if this original vine desires to get back to the land, this original vine must now connect themselves to this vine, which was planted in righteousness. And if we attach ourselves to this vine, as he is righteous, as he is unleavened, then we become unleavened. And then we become taken out of his side as his bride. We must connect ourselves to Hanasah, the vine, the branch, and become branches to become his wife in order to get back to the land. This is the only way. In order to get to Mount Zion, we must be branches. In order to get to Mount Zion, we must be Yahudim. Because Yahuda goes first. And to be and, and to be considered a Yahudim, you must be a Nazarene. You must walk as a Nazarene. You must walk as he walked. You must walk as he walked. Barak Yahuwah, line by line, precept upon precept. True Yahu, true Yahudim are Nazarene. Give us another precept, little one. Jeremiah 2, 20 to 22. Yaram Yahu chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 20 through 22. Yaram Yahu, Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 20 through 22. Yaram Yahu, Jeremiah chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 20 through 22. It's not enough to say that you believe in him. If you believe in Hamashiach, that means then that you will obey him. As Abraham believed and it was a, it was accounted to him or accredited to him as righteousness. What is righteousness? Obedience to Torah. He believed, so he obeyed. If we believe that he is the Hamashiach, then we will, then we will obey the Torah. Then we will obey the living Torah. It's not enough, Christian, to say that you believe. You must obey the Torah in order to be counted as righteous. You must obey the Torah. It is not the hearers of the Torah who are declared righteous, but the doers of the Torah who will be declared righteous. We are not Christians. This is, this is a religion that was created thousands of years ago, prior to the Hamashiach and prior to even Constantine. This religion has its roots in the land of Egypt, where worshippers of Serapis and Helios were called Christians. Constantine, being a Christian himself, did not adopt Christianity. He was already a Christian. He was already a sun worshiper, a worshiper of Mithras, Sol Invictus. He merely uh, engrafted, uh, he, he, he merely engrafted the Christian, the false face, this, 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 uh, this pagan, uh, this pagan doctrine of, of, of Christianity, this Filthy doctrine of Christianity. He, uh, he merely merged this belief into the belief of the Yahudim, into the belief of the Nazarene. And he persecuted all who would not accept his filthy way, his filthy Babylonian way. This is the great whore, this Christian church. Christianity is not, some not, it is not a new doctrine. It goes back to ancient Egypt. We are Nazarene. Well, not serene. 
and we do not differ. The only difference between us and Yahudim is that we believe in the Hamashiach and we understand the difference between the spirit and the letter. He has given us an understanding between Ruach and letter. But no different than uh, that, that in that, that brief excerpt uh, that little one read with respect to the Yahudim. Uh, uh, we, we differ from them in, 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 in terms of the letter that they observed. And in terms of our belief in the Hamashiach. In terms of our belief in the Hamashiach. And we do not hold on to the traditions of the Yahudim, the man-made traditions of the Yahudim. We believe in the scriptures and the scriptures alone. Indeed, true Yahudim are not serene. True Yahudim are not serene. Give us another precept, little one. Jeremiah 2, 20 to 22. Go ahead and read, little one. For of old I have broken your yoke and torn off your chastisements. And you said, I am not serving you. When on every hill, high hill, and under every green tree, you lay down a whore. Yet I have planted you a choice vine, all of it a true seed. Yet I planted you a choice vine. Read. How then have you turned before me into the de degenerate plant of a strange vine? Although you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, yet your crookedness is ingrained before me. Declares the master Yahuwah. Hear him. Hear him. Aphraim. Aphraim, who is Yashar'al, who carries the name of his grandfather. This portion of the vine was uprooted and scattered to the four corners of the earth in 722 BCE. They were divorced, given a certificate of divorce and put away and sent away. Yahuda, who was never divorced but was sent away, was uprooted in the year in which they say is the year 70 AD, in which is the year that historians declare that the Romans ransacked Jerusalem and destroyed the second temple. Yahuda then was, was sent uh, scrambling from Jerusalem and, and, and escaped into the nation, some deep into West Africa and some into East Africa. But Yahuda, according to historians, was scattered in the year 70 AD. So the vine now, the original vine, all 12 tribes have been uprooted and scattered to the four corners of the earth. But a root which was planted in righteousness, which we were originally planted in righteousness. But a root there was left, which was planted in righteousness. The stump of Yishai, Yahusha Hamashiach, who is now grown into a vine. And for all who desire to get back into the get back into the land and who would have life must connect themselves to this vine and become not serene and become branches of ha not saw. And then whereby having become his wife, having become taken out of his side, true Yahudim are in fact not serene. Give us another precept, little one. Zechariah 3, 8 and 10. Right? Zechariah chapter 3. Zachariah chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Zachariah chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Zachariah, Zachariah chapter 8, verses, chapter 3 rather, mm -hmm. verses 8 through 10. Zachariah, Zachariah, Zachariah chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Beginning at verse 8. Read for us, little one. Now listen, Yahusha, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are men of symbol. For look, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. Mm -hmm. See the stone which I have put before Yahusha. Mm -hmm. On one stone are seven eyes. Mm -hmm. See, I am engraving its inscription, mm -hmm. declares Yahuwah of hosts. Mm -hmm. And I shall remove the guilt of that land in one day. In that day, declares Yahuwah of hosts, you shall invite one another under the vine and under the fig tree. Barak Yahuwah, indeed, line by line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, true Yahudim are not serene, which means branches. We are branches of the branch of ha Natsa. And as branches of the branch, again, we have now been taken out of his side. We are now like him. We are like him, and we must then walk like him. As he walked, we must walk. As a dutiful bride walks as her husband, 
who takes on the identity of her husband. Uh, her will is no, she no longer has her own will. She no longer has her own desire. His will becomes her will. His desire becomes her desire. She begins to resemble him. She begins to walk like him. If you are truly a Yahudim, then you will look like your husband. You will look like Hanassah, the branch. You will walk like him. No excuses. He walked perfectly. Yes, he did. He walked perfectly. And as he walked perfectly, uh, showing us how to walk perfectly, we too must walk perfectly as Yahudim if we are to be considered Yahudim, if we have a desire to escape the hour of trial and get to Mount Zion. We must be Nazarene and walk exactly as he walked, as our husband walked, being taken out of his side, being a part of him, resembling him, looking like him, as in the end we're going to fully and wholly look like him and be his bride, be his uh, Azar, Nagar, his help me, his counterpart, his counterpart. And so even now, we are supposed to be his help me. We are supposed to be his Azar, Nagar. We are supposed to be his counterpart. Do you understand? We are supposed to be like him right now. Like Yahushua HaMashiach, we're supposed to be his counterpart. As we are being transferred from esteem to esteem into becoming truly his counterpart in his true form. But even now, Yahudim, Yahuda, we're supposed to be his counterpart. And as he walked, we're supposed to walk. What he did, we're supposed to do. As he walked perfectly, we're supposed to walk perfectly. If you desire to get to Mount Zion, time out for games. This is for grown folk. This is a message for grown folk. This is not a message for children. This is for grown people. This is not milk. This is meat. This is for grown people. We're supposed to be his counterpart right now. We're supposed to be like him, similar to him. A, 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 a mirror image of him right now, right now. As his help me, as his counterpart, as his Azar Nagar, as having been taken out of his side, as being branches of the branch, we're supposed to be just like him right now. And if his Ruach is in you, truly in you, then you will be like him. And if his Ruach is truly in you, then guess what? You have been sealed in this season. You have been sealed. Count it all gladness because you have now been sealed. You have been sealed. In that number of 144,000 to be brought into his mountain as the elder daughter to be joined to him first in marriage and to be given a song that no one else can sing. Give us another precept, little one. Matthew 2, 22 to 23. Matthew 2, Matat Yahu chapter 2. We read this this past Shabbat, but it bears, uh, uh, bears reading again. Matat Yahu in Matthew chapter 2. What verses, little one? 22 to 23. Verses 22 through 23. Matat Yahu, Matthew chapter 2, verses 22 through 23. Matat Yahu, Matthew chapter 22, chapter 2 rather, verses 22 through 23. Beginning at verse 22, read for us, little one. But hearing that Archelaus was reigning over Yehuda uh -huh. instead of his father Herodes, uh -huh. He was afraid to go there, mm -hmm. and having been warned in a dream, he departed to the parts of Galal, uh -huh. and came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. And came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. 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 It mean its meaning is city of branches. City of branches. This has all been ordained and organized and prescribed by the Master. Nazareth, which means city of branches. And so he was called a what, little one? A Nazarene. A Nazarene. And, and those who are joined to ha Nasar are Nazarene, are branches of the branch, having been taken out of his side. True Yahudim are Nazarene. Continue reading, little one. Thus to feel what was spoken by the prophets. Yes. He shall be called Nazarene. He shall be called Nazarene. Nazarene. True Yahudim are Nazarene, are branches branches of the branch having been taken out of his side having been taken out of his side when you look at a tree branch little one 
when you look at a tree branch, right, or, or, or a tree limb, rather, mm -hmm. when you look at the limb, uh, uh, the branches, they, they typically grow from the side of it, don't they? Mm -hmm. They come out of its side. Yes. Sir. Do they not? They typically come out of its side. That's nothing on top. They typically come out of its side. Do they not, little one? Having been taken out of its side as its bride. Understand what is being played out. This is not for children. This message is for adults. We are his bride, his wife, but understand what is ultimately this story, which is ultimately being, being played out. Even now, we are supposed to be his counterpart, his Azar Nagar, his help me. We are to be just like him. As it reads in uh, 1 John chapter 3, we do not yet know what we shall be, but when we see him, we shall see him as he is because we shall be like him. That's talking about Yahuwah in his true form. That's not Yahusha. That is Yahuwah in his true form. But even in the person of Yahusha, we are to be just like him. There, this is a process being played out. From esteem to esteem. This is a process that is being played out. As we are to be now like Yahusha. At the restoration of all things, we will be like Yahuwah in his true form. His counterpart. His Azar Nagar. His help be. The story of Adam and Kua, the restoration of mankind being played out right before your eyes within the nation, within the house of Yashar'al. Be no more children. Understand what is being played out. These are truths that have not been revealed to any other generation. You must walk as his bride if you call yourself a Yahudim. You must be a Nazarene having been taken out of his side. And you must look like him. Walk like him. Speak like him and do what he did. Greater works we will do. If you are his counterpart, if you are truly a Yahudim, oh, behold, there was a great separation going on between those who are truly Yahudim and counterfeits, fakes, Confederate money. Counterfeit money. There is a great separation going on. And the master is making a distinction right before our eyes. Come on, read, little one. John 15, 1 through 6. John 15. John 15. Yahukan in chapter 15. Verses 1 through 6. Yahukana. Chapter 15. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. True Yahudim are not serene. Walk as Yahudim. Walk as Yahudim. To walk as Yahudim is to walk as Nazarene. Being taken out of the side of our husband and being just like him, being his counterpart. His Azar Nagab, his suitable helpmeet. Being just like him. Just like him. Understand the storyline of what is being played out and ultimately what the end will be. Yahukana, John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. Verses 1 through 6, beginning at verse 1. Come on, read, little one. I am the true vine. I am the true vine. The original vine was uprooted, that choice vine, because it bore putrid fruit. But he left a vine, a root, a stump, planted in righteousness, the stump of Yishai. I am the true vine. He is Hanatsah. He is the branch. He is the vine. He is the true vine. Read. And my father is the gardener. Yes. Every branch in me that bears no fruit. Yeah, every branch where? Every in him. Every branch in me. In him. Coming out of him. Listen, little one. You can't make this stuff up, can you? You can't make this stuff up. When, 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 you, look at, when, when you look at the ribs and when you look at the, uh, the bronchial, uh, uh, doesn't, like, doesn't it look like branches? Yes, it does. Looks like branches, doesn't it? You can't make this out. Kua was a branch. She, she, was, she was taken out of a dome. As a branch. As a branch. You are not a true Yahudim unless you are, have been taken out of him. You are not a Yahudim unless you are not serene. Unless you are branches. And if you are truly branches, you look like him. You talk like him. You walk like him. You do the things he did. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And this and, and, and ultimately, 
as this storyline is being played out and, and, and Kua is joined to Adam during the wedding feast, Barak Yahuwah. As Kua is joined to her husband, Adam, during the wedding feast, and we walk perfectly for a day, for 1,000 years, thus completing the cycle. And then being presented as being clean after seven days, on the eighth day, a lamb being prepared, being, being brought forth. And then our husband being able to come into us wholly and fully. And then us looking, and then us being truly one with Yahuwah Al Shaddai. Looking like him, talking like him, acting like him, walking like him, doing the things that he does, being his counterpart, his Azar, Nagab, his suitable help me understand the storyline. This ain't for children. This ain't for children. Come on, read, little one. Every branch in me that bears no fruit. He takes away mm -hmm. and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes mm -hmm. so that it bears more fruit. Mm -hmm. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Mm -hmm. Stay in me and I stay in you as the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself unless it stays in the vine. Mm -hmm. So neither you unless you stay in me. Mm -hmm. I am the vine. You are the branches. You are the branches. You are not serene. I am not saw. You are not serene. Read. He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Mm -hmm. Because without me, you are unable to do naught. Without me, you are able to do nothing. If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. And they are burned. True Nazarene, true Yahudin are not serene. We stay in him, him in us. He has given us his breath, his ruach, as the rib was, as Kua was made from, uh, from the rib of Adam, meaning a uh, uh, sim uh, 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 symbolic of breath, of breath, uh, as he has breathed his breath into us, as, as, as we have been made from one of his ribs, as, as we have been taken out of him, out of the second Adam, now walking like him, talking like him, looking like him, Acting like him, walking as Yahudim, walking as not serene, doing what he did, speaking what he spoke, looking like him, having his very character and his very nature. If your character and your nature, if you don't look like Yahusha, if you don't look like our husband, you're not a Nazarene, you're not a Yahudim, and you're not going to Mount Zion. You're not going there. You're not going there. And so we're laying the foundation here that true Yahudim are not serene, but then we're, we're going to continue to read about Hanasah. And uh, we're going to ensure by the strength of our master Yahuwah that we are in alignment with his character, that we look like our husband. Because if we don't look like this, if we don't look like this model, we ain't not serene. And if we don't look like this model, we are not in him and he is not in us. That's the truth, the whole truth. That's raw and uncut. That's the truth without a chaser. And I pray that the master never lets me speak falsehood to his people, that only his words would forever proceed from my mouth. Barak Yahuwah, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, true Yahudim are not serene, having been taken out of his side as his bride, as his wife, being his counterpart. Be his Azar Nagab, his suitable help me. Give us another precept, little one. Acts 24, 1 through 5. Acts 24. <clears throat> Acts 24. Maasai. Maasai. Acts 24, verses 1 through 5. Acts 24, Maasai. Chapter 24, verses 1 through 5. Maasai Acts 24 verses 1 through 5. This is a message for man and woman. Mm -hmm. We're all his bride. We're all his bride. And at the restoration of all things, he's only going to have one bride, just one, where there will be neither male nor female, neither male nor female. There will be neither male nor female. We will all be one with him. So this is for everyone, whether you are male or female, Listening under the sound of my voice, you must resemble Hanasah. You must resemble Hanasah. 
And husband, you had better resemble her Nassar so that she has an example to follow. You had better resemble her Nassar, the branch, Yahusha, Hamashiach, so that she has an example to follow. You had better do so. You're going to be held accountable if you're not. If you don't look like him, if you don't look like Yahusha, you're wrong. If, if our walk doesn't look like his, it's wrong. If our marriage doesn't look like his marriage with us, it's wrong. It's wrong. He has given us a blueprint that cannot be altered. From esteem to esteem, this storyline cannot be altered. Either you're a Nazarene or you're not. And if you are a Nazarene, then you are truly a Yahudim. And that means that you will be redeemed from the hour of trial in this season because he's coming to get Yahuda first. He's coming to get the elder daughter, the elder son first to bring us to Mount Zion where we will be, where we will be given a song that no one else can sing provided that you are in fact the Yahudim. And if you are the nations who are listening under the sound of my voice, you must attach yourself firstly to Yahusha HaMashiach. Firstly to him. And by attaching yourself to him, you are being engrafted as Yahudim, as Nasreen. And then you must walk as we walk. You must walk as we walk. You must keep his righteous Torah. You must look like him. You must talk like him. You must act like him. You must be like us. You must be like him. If you expect to escape the hour of trial. If you're not looking like that, you, you are in fact walking as the younger son. You're walking in your flesh. You're walking as the younger daughter. You're still walking in your folly. You're still walking in your filth and your uncleanness. And the chastening rod of the great distress is going to have to drive that folly out of you before you, before you are truly prepared to be taken from his side, to be his bride, to be his counterpart when two sticks become one and Kua comes home. And it's joined to her husband, the second Adam. Acts chapter 24, verses 1 through 5, beginning at verse 1. Read, little one. And after five days, the high priest, Kananiah, came down with the elders and a certain speaker, Tertullus, and they brought charges against Shaul before the governor. And when he was called upon, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, having obtained great shalom through you and reforms being brought to this nation by your forethought. We accept it always and in all places, most excellent Felix, with all thanks. But in order not to hinder you any further, I beg you to hear us briefly in your gentleness. For having found this man a plague who stirs up dissension among all the Yahudim. Among all the Yahudim, read. Throughout the world. Throughout the world. And a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarene. And a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarene. Shaul, being a Yahudim, being a Yahudi, was a Nazarene. He was a Nazarene, as were all of his taught ones. They were Nazarene. They were branches. They were taken out of the side of our husband, being his counterpart, being his Azan Nagab, his suitable help me. This is why Shaul looked just like him. When reading the letters of, of Shaul, uh, you have to take a double take because the man sounded just like the Hamashiach. He was just like him because he was a Nazarene, having been taken out of the side of his husband. And so, in this season, if you desire to be that true light to the nations, Yahudah, if you desire to be a true Yahudim, if you desire to make it to Mount Zion, if you desire to have others attracted to your light as moths are drawn to candles, you must be a Nazarene. You must walk as a Yahudim, which is to walk as a Nazarene, which is to look just like the Hamashiach, to speak just like him, to do what he did, to have his very nature and his very character, being his counterpart, his Azar Nagar, his help me. Come on, little one, give us another precept. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. 1 Corinthians 11, <coughs> verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Beginning at verse 1, read for us, little one. 
Become imitators of me. Become imitators of me. Read. As I also am of Mashiach. As I also am of Mashiach. This is what it means to be a Nazarene. To be an imitator of our husband. To look like him. To act like him. To talk like him. To be his counterpart. To be his Azar Nagar. His suitable help me. Having been taken out of his side as a branch. This is what it means to be a Nazarene. To be imitators of him. And if you truly want to walk as a Yahudim, we must walk as Yahusha, Hamashiach, who came as a Yahudi, who came as Hanassah. And the only way to walk as he walked, to walk as a Yahudim, which is to walk as a Nazarene, is to have his breath, is to have him been taken out of his side, to be, take, to be born of him, in other words, to be born of the Hamashiach. As it reads in Romans 8, chapter 9, that anyone who does not have the spirit of Yahuwah, which is the spirit of Hamashiach, does not belong to him. They don't belong to him. They're counterfeit. And there are many counterfeit spirits going around in this season. Many religious spirits. Many spirits of divination. Many counterfeit spirits with want, that want you to believe that they are authentic, but they are lying spirits. Test the fruit of every spirit. Test every spirit. If they don't look like Hanatsah, they are a liar. They're a liar. I've seen many liars. From within here and out, I've seen liars. I see dead people. For now, as it, as it applies to right now, I can't see the world around me. But I can still see and smell a liar. I know a counterfeit when I come across one. If you don't look like him, if you have not been taken out of his side, if you're not an imitator of him, if you're not his counterpart, his azar nagar, his suitable help me, you don't belong to him. You don't belong to him. You're counterfeit. You're fake. You're faking it till you make it with your religious spirit. But he sees you. You buck naked before him. You buck naked before him. Standing there trying to cover your shame with your fig leaves. He sees you. Oh, he's doing a great separation. And if you don't repent now in this season, before this window closes and the doors of the proverbial ark close, you're going to be left in the valley of, oh no, saying, oh no, how did I get left behind here with Ephraim? Because you're trying to hide, because you're trying to fool people. You're trying to fool Yahuwah. Walking in your filthy flesh. Trying to fake like you have his Ruach. You have a Ruach. But it's not his ruach. You have a ruach of religion. You don't belong to him. You have not been taken from his side. You're not his bride. You don't have his breath. And your fruit gives you away. Your heart gives you away. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. True Yahudim are not serene. We resemble our husband. We resemble him. We follow his voice wherever he leads us. We have been taken out of his side. Come on, read, little one. Acts 21, 17 to 24. Acts chapter 21. Which verses, little one? 17 to 24. Verses 17 to 24. Maasai, Acts chapter 21. Verses 17 to 24. Maasai, Acts. Chapter 21, verses 17 through 24. The master is, is preparing an attentive people, a people with a repentant heart, a meek and lowly people, a people willing to receive instruction and humble themselves and walk even as Mashiach walked. He is preparing this people. He is preparing the elder daughter, the elder son, to, to be delivered from the hour of trial which is soon to come upon this earth. 
But prior to the hour of trial, as I said, there's a great separation going on in this earth. He's going to make it crystal clear who it is and who are not. Even prior to taking us to Mount Zion, that pit, that bottomless pit is going to be open. And which the book of Revelation declares that when that time is open, that black smoke is going to come from that pit and it's going to darken the sun. It's going to be black and dark outside when the demons from this bottomless pit arise. With the text, which in which the text describes is looking like locusts, having hair like women, having tails like a scorpion, and they are going to be given the authority and power to sting men for five months, and the pain is going to be so excruciating that the text declares that men are going to pray for death, but death are going to flee them. Ah, but the text also declares that uh, they're going to have power over everyone except those having the seal. Of the living Elohim upon their foreheads, who are Nazarene, who are Yahudim, having been taken out of his side, they will have no power over us. And so, all of you who are faking it, thinking that you're hidden, thinking that you can reside amongst us and fake like you, like like you are attached to us, like like, I, I, like you are one of us, when it is clear that you're not. All of you who are who are outside, who are faking it until you're making it, calling yourself a Yahudim when when you don't resemble a, when you don't resemble the toenails of Yahushua Hamashiach. These demons are gonna sting you. They gonna sting you. They gonna sting you, and you will not die. And the world is gonna see your nakedness. Even those of whom you were amongst, we gonna see your nakedness. We're gonna see your shame. Because you had an opportunity to repent. You had an opportunity to humble yourself. But you instead, because of your selfish, wicked pride, thought that you could hide amongst his people. Thought that you could hide amongst true Yahudi and not be discovered. All oh, your nakedness is going to be shown before everybody. True Yahudi are not serene, having the seal of the living Elohim upon their forehead, having been taken out of the side of our husband. Come on, read, little one. And when we had arrived in Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. And on the following day, Shaul went in with us to Yaakub, and all the elders came. And having greeted them, he was relating one by one what Elohim had done among the nations through his service. And when they said and heard it, they praised the master. And they said to him, you see, brother, how many thousands of Yahudim there are who have believed and are all ardent for the Torah. But they have been informed about you that you teach all the Yahudim who are among the nations to forsake Masha, saying not to circumcise the children nor to walk according to the practices. What then is it? They shall certainly hear that you have come. So do this, what we say to you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Take them and be cleansed with them and pay their expenses so that they shave their heads. And all shall know that what they have been informed about you is not true, but that you yourself also walk orderly, keeping the Torah. A true Yahudim is a Nazarene. He is not a Christian. He keeps the Torah in spirit and in truth. In roar and in truth, he guards the Torah because the Torah has been written upon his or her heart. His heart, his or her heart has been circumcised and the nakedness of the heart has been covered. And they have been taken out of the side of their husband. Their husband has entered them. They have been taken out of his side. And now we are his counterpart. We are his Azar Nagar. His suitable help me. We look like him. We talk like him. We walk like him. And in walking like him, we walk like Yahudim. And to walk as Yahudim is to walk as a Nazarene. Is to walk as a Nazarene. And now let's take a look as promised. Well, how are we looking for time, little one? Let's see. Uh, 114. Rock Yahuwah. As promised, we're going to. I continue here in the book of Matthew, looking at Hanasah, looking at him and, and, and comparing our character to his.
to ensure that we are found worthy to be called Yahudi, to be called Nazarene, so that when he comes that we are found well doing, well doing, so that when he comes with his reward, he will reward each of us according to our works and bring us to Mount Zion, where we will be given a song that no one else can sing. Continuing in the book of Matthew, the Bashar, the good news of Matthew, which was originally written in the uh, Abarit tongue, in the Hebrew tongue. We continue here taking a look at Hanatsar, at a Nazarene, to ensure that we are Nazarene, to ensure that we resemble him, that we are his counterpart, that we are walking as, we, that, as he walks, and to ensure that we are now walking as Yahudim. That we are walking as Yahudim, being that light to the Gentiles, so that perhaps through the light that proceeds from us, that they would be drawn to that light as moths are drawn to candles, <coughs> and that they would perhaps be delivered and saved in this season from the hour of trial, which is soon to come upon the whole earth. Turn now to Matthew chapter 3. We're not going to read much tonight. We're not going to read much tonight. We may read Matthew 3. Uh, if we get through this, we may read Matthew 4. Uh, but for sure, Matthew 3. But we're not going to read much tonight because it's a fourth night. And uh, it, it is understood that many uh, have to punch the proverbial clock tomorrow. But for now, we're going to read Matthew, Matthew Yahoo chapter 3. And again, we're going to work our way through this book. We're going to work our way through this book, examining the behavior of our husband. And ensuring as dutiful brides, having been taken out of his side, if in fact you have, that we resemble him, that we look like him as his counterpart, as his help meet here on earth, as his help meet here on earth, that we resemble him, walking like him, talking like him, looking like him as his counterpart. Matat Yahu, Matthew, chapter 3. Matat Yahu, Matthew. Chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, read for us, little one. And in those days, Yehuchanan the Immerser came proclaiming in the wilderness of Yehuda uh -huh. and saying, Repent, for the reign of the heaven has come near. If, if you have eyes to see and a heart to understand, all Yahoo has come again. All Yahoo has come again and he is proclaiming the same message. Repent, for the reign of Yahuwah draws nigh. Come on, read, little one. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Yahshiahu, saying, A voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Yahuwah, make his path straight. And Yahuwah had a garment of camel's hair and a leather girdle around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Now Yahuwah was a Luim, he was a Levite priest, but he was also a Nazarene, not to be, not to be confused with Nazarene. He was a Nazarene. But I want to bring your attention to the fact that he was a priest. He was a Kahan uh, in the order of Levi. But simultaneously, he was also a priest, a Kahan in the order of Moki Zadat. In the order of Moki Zadat, the Levitical priesthood was always supposed to be a segue. Always supposed to be a segue to Moki Zadat. Because indeed, we were never supposed to be a nation under priests. We were always supposed to be a nation of priests. And so when we see here the meeting of Yahukanan, the Immerser, and Yahusha, understand what is taking place. We see now a merging, a merging of the Levitical Kahana. This is why the Levitical priesthood, the Levitical Kahana is called an everlasting priesthood, an everlasting Kahana, because it has to do with Melchizedek who is everlasting, who is from everlasting to everlasting. It has to do with Melchizedek. We see a merging here taking place. And more importantly, uh, we see righteousness being fulfilled because uh, 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 an immersion is an offering, and offerings are always overseen by Kahan. Thus, Yahukanan is overseeing the immersion of the offering of Yahusha HaMashiach. Come on, read, little one. Then Jerusalem and all Yehuda and all the country around the Yardim went out to him. 
And they were immersed by him in the Ardeen, confessing their crimes. Mm -hmm. And seeing many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his immersion, he said to them, Brood of adders, who has warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Bear therefore fruit worthy of repentance. Hear him. Bear therefore fruit worthy of repentance. A true Yahudim bears the fruit that is worthy of repentance. Hear him. A true Yahudim who is a Nazarene bears fruit worthy of repentance. He bears fruit as we just read in Yahuqana, the 15th chapter. If you don't bear fruit on that vine, Yahuwah, the, the divine dresser will come and cut you off where you will wither and dry up and be cast into the fire to be burned. A true Yahudim who is a Nazarene bears fruit worthy of repentance because his husband who is within him will have it no other way. He will convict you. He will convict you of all the uncleanness and filth that is in you if he is truly in you. If you truly are a Nazarene, if you truly are a Yahudim, you will have his character and he will convict you of things. Men, you won't walk in perverseness and uncleanness. You will walk as he walked. You will look as he looked. Women, if you truly have him in you, if you truly have been taken from the side of your husband, you will walk meekly, quietly, and lowly. You will cover yourselves. You will not wear these dresses with splits in them showing your inner thighs. Showing the shape of your body. If he truly is in you, he will convict you of this behavior. He will convict you if he truly is in you. So if you're walking around this way, saying that he is in you, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. A, a spirit is in you. A ruach is in you, but the ruach of Yah of Yah of, of, of Yahuwah is not in you. If you're walking around this way and he is not convicting you, he is not in you. A true Yahudim who is a Nazarene will bear fruit worthy of repentance. Come on, read little one. And do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as father. For I say to you that Elohim is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And the ax is already laid to the root of the trees. Every tree then which does not bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit, John chapter 15, read. Is cut down and thrown into the fire. Is cut down and thrown into the fire. A true Yahudim will bear fruit, will bear the fruit of righteousness that leads to everlasting life. A true Yahudim who is a Nazarene will bear fruit worthy of repentance. One who is not a Yahudim, who is not a Nazarene, who have not been taken out of his side. It's going to be cut off and thrown into the fire to be burned. And, he, and will be left here to be refined and purified and corrected in the fires of Yahakub's distress, of the great distress, of the great tribulation, which is soon to come upon this earth. There is a great separation going on in this season, and it's going to be very apparent, very apparent here soon. Indeed, if you have eyes to see, there is a great separation here in the wilderness of the nation as he is separating the rebels from amongst us. There is a great separation going on right now that is clear, very clear to me, and it should be also clear to you if you are indeed a Nazarene. Come on, read little one. I indeed immerse you in water unto repentance. I indeed immerse you in water unto repentance. A true Yahudim receives the immersion of water. In the name of Yahusha HaMashiach is immersed in the water. In the name of Yahusha HaMashiach for the forgiveness of sins. He repents. He has repented. And he has been immersed in the water for the forgiveness of sin. Whereby having been impaled with him. And whereby having been buried with him. And whereby having been uh, resurrected to the newness of life. And whereby having been immersed in this water. Which is a representation of living water. Afterwards having, been re have, having received his breath. Having been pulled from his side. Having received his breath and having the covenant renewed in you. 
having become his bride, his counterpart, his Azar Nagab, having become one flesh with the second Adam. We haven't become one flesh with Yahuwah yet. That won't happen until the completion of the 7,000 years. But we have become one flesh with the second Adam, if you have his breath. We have become one flesh with him and become his bride, his counterpart, his Azar Nagab. His help me understand what is being played out right before your eyes. When we receive his breath, we become his counterpart. We are taken out of his side. And then we begin to resemble him, look like him, talk like him, walk like him. We become his counterpart, his eyes on the God, his help me here on earth. Come on, read little one. But he who is coming after me. Is mightier than I. Yes. Whose sandals I am not worthy to bear. Yes. He shall immerse you in the Kadush Rook. Yes. And fire. And fire. He will immerse you in the Kadush Ruach and fire. A true Yahudim has been immersed in the Kadush Ruach. A true Yahudim has been immersed in water. He has repented. He or she has repented. And they have been immersed. They have been immersed via. They have been immersed by the Ruach HaKadush and fire. They have been immersed. Now, there's a counterfeit Ruach that wants to counterfeit being immersed in the Ruach HaKadus. But your counterfeit, your fake, your lie and the truth is not in you. He sees you and I see you. Oh, I see dead folk. I see dead people. He sees you and I see you. And I see you. But if you're listening under the sound of my voice, he's still giving you a chance to repent. Because he desires for none to perish. But a true Yahudim, a true Nazarene, has received the Ruach HaKadus. Has been immersed in fire and has received the seal of the living Elohim upon their forehead in this season. And are now having been taken out of his side, I guess it are his counterpart and are bearing fruit, are light bearers, are, there's light emanating from us. And he has promised in this season to keep us from the hour of trial, which is soon to come upon the earth. Come on, read little one. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he shall thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the storehouse. But the chafe he shall burn with unquenchable fire. Then Yahushua came from Galal to Yahukanan at the Yardim to be immersed by him. This is Hanassar now. He is a Yahudi. And this is the Yahudi that we must follow. This is Hanassar. This is our husband. If we've received his breath, his rib, We've been taken out of his side and now we're his counterpart and we must look like him and act like him and walk like him and talk like him and be a suitable help me unto him on earth. Read. But Yehukanen was hindering him saying, I need to be immersed by you and you come to me. But Yahusha answering said to him, permit it now for thus it is fitting for us to feel all righteousness. Mm -hmm. Then he permitted him. A true Yahudim again has been immersed by water, has repented in accordance with Acts chapter 2, verse 38, has repented from sin, which is transgression of Torah, has been immersed in order to satisfy the penalty of death that was pronounced over Adam, over all mankind with the partaking of the fruit, because when we are immersed into his name, we are impaled with him, and then we are buried with him, and then we are resurrected to the newness of life, whereby having the penalty of death paid in us through belief in him, whereby then as being resurrected new creatures, as behold, if anyone be in Mashiach is a new creature, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new as being resurrected as new creatures, as new wine skins. He can then pour new life into us, new wine into us. And then at this point, at this juncture, in this juncture alone, do we become taken from his side, having received breath, having been taken from his side, from his ribs, uh, having, uh, 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 having received breath from him and having become his counterpart and having become a Nazarene and having become a true Yahudim. And only if this is taking place and we are walking as Yahudim, as full grown elder sons and elder daughters being the elder daughter who's be joined in marriage first in accordance with the Torah. If we are walking this way, when he returns shortly, he has promised to remove us from the hour of trial and to bring us to his Kadush mountain and to give us a song that no one else can sing. Read little one. And having been immersed, Yahushua went up immediately from the water 
and see the heavens were open and he saw the Kadush Rook of Elohim descending like a dove and coming upon him and see a voice out of the heavens saying, this is my son, the beloved in whom I delight. We are not his sons and daughters. We are not truly his sons and daughters and truly not serene until this takes place, until the Ruach comes upon us, until we are born from the loins from above, from his loins above, Yahushua being Yahuwah, until we are born from his loins. And he who, who is not flesh and blood, but who is Ruach until we are born of water and of Ruach in the same way in which Adam was born. This is about the restoration again of all mankind. The earth again was made out of water by water, out of water by water. Adam was 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 uh, Adam was created from earth, which was made from water. And so he was created of water and of spirit. Looking at the name Adam, it is comprised of the Hebrew letters Aleph, Dalet, Aleph, Dalet, and Mom. Aleph, Dalet, and Mom. Within his name, we see the word Dom, so we know that he is comprised of blood. Within his name, we see the Hebrew letter Mom, which uh, always represents water, which is always a representation of spirit, which is always a representation of spirit. Understanding this, that it is the water and it is the blood and it is the spirit that bear witness. These three bear witness in Shamayim. These three are the Dalit. These are the Dalit. This is the doorway back to Yahuwah. We cannot get to Yahuwah without being born of water, of, of spirit and of blood and of dumb and of dumb. And this is how the Mashiach came by water, by by blood and by spirit. This is how he came as the second Adam in the same way in which the first Adam was born of water, of blood and of spirit. He came as the second Adam being born in the same way to pave the way for his wife, Kua, his wife, Kua, to be rejoined with him in the millennial, in the millennial reign. When the two wives, when the two women become one stick, when Yahuda and Aphraim again become one stick and we celebrate a wedding feast with our husband, with Adam, with the second Adam for a thousand years while he continues to teach us his ways, while he continues to cleanse us and teach us his ways for a thousand years. And after the completion of seven days, seven days meaning completion, when the woman is clean, when she's clean of Anidia in seven days, on the last great day, the eighth day, a, 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 a sacrifice would be presented, a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. And the woman will finally be, be declared clean. And that second Adam will put out flesh and we, he will assume his true form as Yahuwah al Shaddai and his bride who will now be, who will now be declared clean. He, in accordance with the Torah, can now come into his wife Fully come into his wife and to his bride, where then his wife, his bride, will be fully one with him. She will be like him. She will be his counterpart. She will be his Azan the God. She will be his help me. Understand, understand the storyline, this beautiful love story that is taking place right before our eyes. Thank you, Master Yahuwah, for what you are revealing in this season. For truth that you have not revealed to any other generation. We are unworthy, Master. Unworthy. We are unworthy servants. Just lowly, unworthy servants. We are unworthy of what you're revealing to us in this season. I'm under no illusion, Master, that everyone is going to receive this message. This message is only for your remnant within the remnant. Those who hear your voice, of whom another voice they will not follow. Those who are not yours may, may slander your servant, may ridicule him and call him a heretic because of the truth that you've spoken through him. But I care not. I care not, Master. That means that I pray that my reward will be great before you, that my reward will be great. I'm grateful for the truth that you have revealed to us in this season. Truth, Master, once again, that it has not been revealed to any other generation. And this is testament that the time, that the hour of our redemption draws nigh. As the books are being opened, 
and you are pouring into your servants, that you pour, that you have poured into your servant, not through studying, not through uh, the studying of knowledge, but you have poured into your servant through your Ruach. This didn't come through study. This came through your voice speaking to your servant. But it is my prayer that those of whom you've given eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand have received this message this night. And that not one word is fallen void to the sorrow, but that it would go forth and accomplish that which you have sent it forth to do. It is my prayer that this word is gone forth as a shattering hammer, shattering both chain and shackle, breaking up fallow ground, making that, that ground, that soil of the human heart fallible and conducive to the planting of this seed of this word that has been strong forth this night. So that afterwards you would pour out your water upon that seed, the water of the living water such that that seed would grow forth to become a mighty tree, producing the fruit that leads to everlasting life. Let not one seed fall by the wayside, Master. Let not one seed fall on shallow ground. Let not one seed fall amongst thorns. But let this word, I pray, go forth and accomplish that which you have sent it forth to do. And let it bear fruit, producing the fruit that leads to everlasting life. In the Basham of Yahushua, HaMashiach, so be it. So be it. So be it. For those of you on YouTube, once again, we're grateful that the master has sent you our way. I didn't want to make this too long tonight uh, because it's a fourth night teaching. And there are others who are uh, who have to punch the proverbial clock uh, tomorrow to to go into work. So I didn't want to make it too long, but we will continue this. Uh, we will continue this walk, walking as Yahudim, looking at the example of Hanatsar. We will continue this on the Shabbat you. And once again, if you would desire to join us live, uh, you may find our contact information. It is located within the channel description. There's an email address there in which you may contact us if you desire to fellowship with us live. Until the next time, Yahuwah Barak you and God you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and show favor unto you. Yahuwah lift up his face upon you and give you shalom. Thus you shall put my name on the children of Yasha all, and I myself shall barak them. So be it, so be it, so be it. Shalom.